what God designed you to be. You are it before you even walk in it. You already have what it takes, the raw materials, the essence, the support, the supply, and the assignment. I'm telling you, I'm excited because I already see it. Tell the referee to go to the sideline. Don't even play the highlight tapes. The game has just changed. I need you to believe it because I already see it. I'm excited. I can't keep it to myself. I had to pause and not just tell you. I had to tell your children, tell your neighbor, tell your coworker, tell your friends that the angels in heaven are not going to call you by the wrong name. You have been misnamed for the last time. You will not be called broke. You will not be called lonely. You will not be called depressed. You will not be called anxious. You will not be called unwanted or unloved. Why? Because the game has just changed. I'm having a midwife crisis because I got too many people who don't know their name. It's not what you've been called. It's what you answer to. A new birth is committed to uh, making sure that the community uh, realizes that the church is not dormant, is not sleep, and is not silent. We're alive and well. It is our aim, it is our intention to make God proud. Uh, we opened up at 10 o'clock this morning with literally thousands of cars lined up all the way to the highway and uh, they keep coming. It's a two for one blessing. They're coming through this line. Uh, they're getting uh, poultry, getting dairy products. Uh, Bowdens uh, Dairy brought us crates of milk uh, on this morning. The farmers, black farmers, uh, have stepped up to the plate. And when it is that they leave out of here, they're going to another line uh, to get their free COVID-19 testing. I'm telling you, this is the church doing ministry out loud in public space, and I'm grateful for it. I wish you could see the smiles of uh, seniors, uh, young couples, struggling college students, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people who are fully employed, furloughed, um, all are here um, on the day, and I'm grateful and I'm glad that the church is doing what the church is supposed to do. Jesus said, even as you treat the least of these, what you're doing unto me. Uh, I'm grateful unto God, and I am uh, excited uh, about his work, uh, and I believe that greater things than these uh, we're going to be able to do. He puts his hand on the dirt and makes it in his image and in his likeness, because watch this, he realizes uh, birds don't matter. Giraffes don't matter. Hyenas don't matter. God help me. I know I took the long way home, but it's only until he made a black man that he then put his hand on it. And in Genesis, for the very first time, he was saying to white supremacists and the police officers and the Donald Trump, here it is, that black lives matter. Why? Because I put my hand on it. And so in the name of Jesus, I now speak wealth and prosperity over every person who is anointed and been struggling. I speak the power of God that maketh rich and add no sorrow to it. I speak over every believer that in the time of trouble, he shall hide you. You ought to be shouting in your living room because God said, I hope you can handle it every Every day is going to be a payday. Say that again, preacher. Every day is going to be a payday. So on Tuesday, checks are coming in the mail. Wednesday, interest is going to be increased. On Friday, bills are going to be paid. On Saturday, tuition is going to be handled. That's why I can't wait till the battle is over. But I got to shout right now like it's already done.
Listen, the praise is about to go up and New Birth Worship Experience is about to go down. I want you to stop everything you're doing right now and I want you to share with every family member, every friend, every co-worker, every college mate because God is getting ready to speak to us in a special way. This is a day the Lord has made. We have a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. Let me introduce myself. I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons. I'm blessed and honored to serve as the executive pastor here and if you are watching, you are watching the most universal, powerful worship Worship experience on the planet led by none other than our lead shepherd, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. I'm excited because Jonathan Nelson is up next. Sister Tiffany Boone is up next. The praise team is up next. And the word of God is getting ready to transform your life. Are you ready to go into worship? I said, are you ready to go into worship? We're going in. Three, two, one. Come on, you got to put your hands together on this one. Come on, put them together real good.
once again, New Birth, it's time for your video announcements. Each and every week, the King's Table continues to bless families all over this city. That's right, free groceries for anyone from 10 until 12 noon. Each and every Saturday at the Bell Family Life Center. Just pull up and be blessed. Everyone is welcome at the King's Table. And we want you to log on to newbirth.org and visit our online store. There you can get the book of the month, the New Birth Mask, and all your ministry needs. And while you're at newbirth.org, check out our newsletter. It's Lots of helpful information. Log on today. Newbirth.org. Coronavirus disease 2019, referred to as COVID-19, has evolved from an isolated disease in a region in China to a global pandemic that has brought countries to a standstill, pushed hospital systems to the brink, and dragged the global economy into a recession like we've never seen before. These are trying times. With the U.S. death toll over 200,000, poor national leadership, and marching in the streets, protesting injustices against people of color, it looks as if there is no hope in sight. Oh, but there is hope in sight, and God has sent his mighty word through the mouth of Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. From midwife crisis, to adjust, to prospering in a pandemic, to making the top 10. These are all sermon series that you need to add to your personal library. You will be encouraged, empowered, and strengthened in this pandemic time in history. Visit calltoconquer.com to get your copies today. And we want you to mark your calendars for Tuesday, October 20th through Thursday, October 22nd. That's right. It's our vaccination revival, curing stagnation nightly at 7.30 p.m. Don't miss Dr. Jerome Glenn. But you represent the church wherever you go. Pastor Darius Nixon. Although I was in his mouth, you did not give me as prey to his teeth. And Pastor Tolan Morgan. God often calls you at a time when your life is a complete contradiction to your revelation. Also, special musical guests is Ja'Kalen Carr, Stout, and Miranda Curtis. October 20th through the 22nd, nightly online. Don't miss it. And that's gonna do it for today's video announcements. Good morning and happy Sunday. The seasons may have changed, but our God never changes. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is always faithful, always consistent, always giving, always providing. He is the one who never leaves us, never forsakes us. And even during this pandemic season, he has been right by our side. So today, let's give back to the Lord. It's time for us to give our tithes and our offering. As committed believers, we give 10% of our income to the Lord. And as faithful citizens, we give God an offering. Please use the prompts at the bottom of the screen and you can give today so to the Lord. He has given so freely to us. Let's not change up on him. Let's give to God. This morning I'm happy because God is still blessing. He's still in the blessing business. That's what my daddy told me. You've got blessings that are being unlocked, released immediately, suddenly, right now, in your home, for your family. God is blessing. You ought to type that on the screen. God is blessing. I know you've been waiting for a blessing from the Lord. God hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. I know you've been hasn't forgotten you so i'm here to let you know god is blessing good god he's still blessing i came to let you know this morning that god is blessing he's still blessing will y'all help me do verse saying i know you've been waiting i know you've been waiting Sister, 
God hasn't forgotten He has not forgotten you God is blessed. God is blessed. He's still, He's still blessed. Hey, my brother, my sister, God is blessed. God is blessed. Guess what? He's still, He's still blessed. Can we speak those blessings over people today? Come on, say it. It's a Everything that you thought you could not get access to, the combination is now spinning. The vault is now open. All you got to do is reach up and grab it. 
Over the last two weeks, I've been talking about 365, how God can give you a blessing in one day that will override everything that has happened in a year. I don't know how your faith is set up, how it's built, but I believe for you that any day now, God is going to flip the circumstances of all that has happened this year. I heard uh, from a commentator that 2020 is the year that changed the world. And can you believe that in 2020 is the year you're going to get a blessing that will change your life? It's 365. If you believe God has that kind of authority, I want you to please just place 365 on the screen that I am trusting God, that God is going to do something in one day that's going to flip my year. I want you to go with me now, if you will, with no delay. Meet me in Mark chapter 9, verse 21. Mark chapter 9, verse 21. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. Jesus answered the boy, the boy's father, how long are you? has he been like this from childhood? He replied. I want to preach for a little while this Sunday morning using as a subject, don't talk to me like I'm a child. Don't talk to me like I'm a child. The most photographed figure of the 20th century was abolitionist freedom fighter Frederick Douglass, who once said, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken adults. Given the current landscape of this country, the construction site for building children should be marked unsafe. As a matter of fact, some parental permits should be revoked and the faulty equipment that has been utilized regrettably has rendered far too many emotionally disabled. This past summer might as well cemented PTSD into the souls of many who are still pubescent. Nobody has yet taken into account that it was a 15-year-old girl who took the video of George Floyd being murdered on her way to an amusement park. What is the psychological repercussion and consequence of witnessing such a horrendous sight? Nobody has really expended a lot of energy that Jacob Blake was shot seven times by police in his back, all in front of his children. It pains me that as a society, we have normalized sanctioned executions, that they now come on the news and social media with no advisory, giving no thought as to how it'll impact the children who repeatedly view them. The Economic Policy Institute published last year that frightening or threatening situations are more frequently visited upon black children who are distinctively disadvantaged. When contending with a relentless onslaught of stress, it turns toxic, causing the body to overproduce hormones, refusing the physiological aspects to return back to normal. The contributors can range for stress in children range from divorce, witnessing domestic violence, neglect, financial hardship, significant loss, becoming sexualized, or experiencing the death of a close family member. Here's what you ought to know. Sustained stress at this level can stunt brain growth. It'll diminish brain activity in the prefrontal cortex. And that is the region that controls executive functionality, like learning, 
memory, attention, anxiety, and emotional regulation. According to Dr. Jade Wu, the savvy philosophical psychologist, she argues that there are three side effects of childhood trauma that manifest in adulthood. Three side effects of childhood trauma that manifest into adulthood. I want you to write this down, uh, parents and those of you who are survivors. Here are the three areas. Number one, it uh, contributes to chronic illness. Children who are under trauma will contribute to chronic illness in their adult life. According to the Virginia Commonwealth University of Medicine, the sexually exploited have higher cancer diagnosis as adults, even if they were exploited as children. It shows links to immune deficiency, heart, lung, and liver in their adult life from the trauma they endured as children. The second area, after the contribution to chronic illness, the second area is it complicates sexuality. Complicates sexuality. More trauma that a child has, more access they have, hear this, to STDs, unwanted pregnancy, and engaging in risky behavior shows up in their adult life even though they were traumatized as children. The third area, the first one is contributing to chronic illness. Second one was complicating sexuality. The third one, please write this down even on the screen. It confuses time and reality. It confuses time and reality. So children who were traumatized when they're adults, they have large gaps in memory. They can remember what they were doing at nine, but somehow or another, it doesn't pick back up until they're 13, 15 years of age. Time begins to be a fuzzy integer by itself. Many adults who had childhood trauma uh, live in disassociation. Regrettably, find themselves afflicted with multiple personality disorder. And the greatest threat of all is that they have the inability to feel hurt, the inability to feel pain. There's this young man I've been concerned about, and I wanted to introduce him to you this morning. The fact of the matter is I, I just met him in Mark chapter 9. His father brought him to get some help because he was seemingly possessed by a spirit. And that spirit robbed him of his speech. The sacred text tells us that this young man would go into seizures. He would foam at the mouth and he would become rigid. They brought him to Jesus. And Jesus asked a critical question that so many sermonizers have hopscotched over. Here's what Jesus asked of the Father. How long has he been this way? And the Father responds back, since he was a child. I got to stop right there. Jesus asked about this boy who is possessed by a spirit, foaming at the mouth, going into seizures. How long he been acting like this? And the Father says, since he was a child. I got to stop right there. I got to ask a question that if he is a full grown man here and he's been having these seizures, having these attacks, losing his ability to speak since he was a child, here's the question I got to ask of the text and I got to ask some parent now, why wasn't it addressed then? What trauma precipitated it? Question I got to ask of this young man that the text refuses to answer is, did the boy's mother die? 
Did the boy's mother walk away because his illness was too much and too overwhelming for her to be a caretaker? What happened that precipitated him going into these seizures? Did he witness his mother getting beaten? I'm trying to figure out, why did he go silent? Was he inappropriately touched by a coach, by a next-door neighbor, by his own father? What happened to him that he lost his voice? He was condemned about his sexual proclivities, was unsure about his masculinity and his identity. What happened to him? I'm trying to figure out what happened in the childhood that wasn't addressed in the, until they were adult. And I'm not even talking about this boy. In the text, I'm talking to you. That you are still carrying the wounds of childhood that have never been addressed. That you were in fact berated because you had breasts come prematurely. What happened in your own life when you had to contend with a mother who was jealous or a father that felt unfulfilled? What happened when nobody has ever paused to examine the psychosis of the damage of happening that you kept transferring to different schools every other school year. What happened that you never found yourself in a place of permanency, moving from one cousin to another aunt, finally to your grandmothers, and your biological parents would only stop by occasionally giving a cameo. What happened? Somehow you were teased by siblings and the stain and the, the tears that never came down your face are still evident in your soul. What happened that your hair wouldn't grow? That your weight was always an issue? That your complexion was a problem? What happened that you were resented because you reminded mom too much of dad? What happened that they called you crazy because you were bright? because you were intelligent, because you were spiritual. What happened that they saw your gift but never did anything to amplify it but always vilified it and ridiculed it? What happened? Where would you be if you had been surrounded by people that believed in you, that saw your capacity, that saw your ability? And this young man who keeps going into seizures keeps losing his voice, keeps falling out. He's been doing it as he was a child, but nobody ever pauses to give redress until he's grown. And finally, the father who's exasperated says to Jesus, if you can do anything, and God is offended, what do you mean if I can do anything? There is nothing I cannot do for your child. Can I go a step further? There's nothing I can't do for you. How dare you ask me, is it possible? God is saying today, I'm going to give you your self-esteem back. I'm going to give you your identity back. I'm going to give you for the first time self-love going to give you a close encounter of the divine kind so you can realize you are greater than your childhood. And he said to that spirit that I now say to the thousands of you who are watching, whatever is that crippling demon that has haunted you since your childhood, it's got to come out of you. By the power of the grace of God, whatever it is that has handicapped you, that has wounded you, that has left you incomplete or feeling inadequate, that demonic spirit comes out of you today. I don't know how it is that you feel about it, but there are those of you that got a little boy trapped inside of you. You got a little girl trapped inside of you. And you keep masking or raiding as an adult. And every now and again, that child peeks its head out. 
waiting to be consoled, waiting to be redressed, waiting to be healed. But you keep putting on grown-up clothes, going to a grown-up job, tiptoeing around a grown-up marriage and relationship. And it all ends up being dysfunctional because of that child that was not addressed. And God says, I'm dealing with childhood issues today. And I don't care how long you had to contend with it. Nine until you were 12. 13 until you were 15. 17 until the present, grew up too early, experienced stuff too soon, dealt with things prematurely. God says, I know you've had to be strong. I know you've had to hold it together. I know that you have always had to be the reliable person and people got no idea. On the inside, you got a kid having a seizure. You've been unable to speak what you've been feeling what you've been addressing. And Jesus speaks to the demon and says, come out of him. And here's my problem. I got to argue with the text. Please forgive me. I, I, I got to argue with the text for the few moments I got left. The father says, thank you. Jesus declares he's healed. But you'll notice if you'll read it on your own in Mark chapter 9, did you notice at no point do we ever hear from the young man? The father takes him home. Why? Because he's still treating him like a child. Today you get your voice back. What it is that you have been silent about, you got blood coming down your chin because you keep biting your tongue. But as of this moment, no devil in hell, no supremacist being, principality, or power will ever be able to talk to you like a child because you're fully grown in the grace of God. Speak those things that are not as though they are and speak those things you ain't going to tolerate. Speak those things that you were sick of. Speak those things that you have turned a blind eye to. Speak those things that you have become wearied in managing. Nobody's going to speak to you like a child when you then begin to manifest the word. When I was a child, I spake like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became grown, I put away childish things. Today is your maturity party. Today, when you look in the mirror, remind yourself, I'm a full-grown woman. I'm a full-grown man. I couldn't be with all of the stuff that I've endured in my childhood. I shouldn't be standing. But God has put a deposit in me that has secured me. And God said, from the years of your childhood, in one day, you're finally going to be free from it. I want you to lift up that hand. I want to pray for you even in this moment. I'm believing that God is putting us in a maturing season. He's putting in a place where we're finally able to activate the season things of God. I don't got time to be playing around. I'm not going to get stifled by your opinion. You are not going to wreck my life because you didn't speak to me because you don't like me. You don't know what I went through as a child. At this point, I can just shake it off. Let me pray for you because I, the way my faith is set up in this moment, my faith is stretched to believe that not only are you going to be healed from every childhood wound, but God is stirring up the gift of your full masculinity, stirring up the gift of your full womanhood, and today you embrace it. God, I pray for this your son, for this your daughter. I have no idea the secrets they've had to keep. Have no idea how many knives they've had to pull out of their backs. I don't even know how they were certified to be cardiologists to perform heart surgery on themselves. 
But today, God, I speak healing. I speak restoration. I speak peace. We forget those things which are behind. And as of today, we press towards the mark. If you believe it, come on, give him praise right where you are. Give him glory. I'm telling you, millions didn't make it. You're one of the ones that did. I want you to be a part of a ministry. I want you to be a part of a church that wants to mature you. This is not kinder care. We're not playing around with the things of God. But I'm telling you, there is a realm in him that your soul yearns to be in. You've been walking around this mountain long enough. It's time for you to move up just a little bit higher. Those of you who feel that there is a draw inside of you to mature in the things of God, to mature in your own emotional capacity, to mature in your relationships. Can I say this? To mature in your management of money, to mature in how you respond and not react. I want you to do the mature thing today. I know you've been a serial visitor. You've been a committed visitor, but come on, stop playing around. Do what mature people do. Settle down. Make a commitment that New Birth is going to be my church. This is going to be my ministry. This is where I am believing that the journey of a million miles start with the very first step. I want you to become a member today. I want you to join today. I want you to align yourself with the body of Christ called new birth. I want you to make up in your mind, I got to get saved because my heavenly father is the only father I can trust. My heavenly father may be the only father I can call. The heavenly father may be the only father I have access to. And so as a consequence today, I let him in my heart. You know what I discovered? Tithing is for adults. Tithing is for mature people. Here's what they didn't tell you in Sunday school. It's tithing only works for people who have a budget. Tithing only is effective. The only people who can get it are people who live with a budget in mind. You can't ask or expect 10% for people who are not accountable for the 90 Come on, there's a whole lot of people getting ready to go to jail, getting ready to face charges for misappropriation of PPP allocations because they got grown money with childlike maturity. Look at what it is that God has blessed you with. I want you to be accountable of how it is that God has blessed you this week, how he's opened up a window and he's poured out a blessing. Today, I'm coming to you live from the Pond City Market roof so that you can see the whole city. And I wanted you to see the city and be mindful that overlooking the city is when Jesus wept. Because below it, he saw a whole lot of adults acting like children. A whole lot of people who had gift but didn't know how to receive his presence. I want you to right now, so I want you to give. I want you to be a partner. I want you to be a participator. I want you to be fully engaged. When I was a kid, growing up in church, I'd act up. My grandmother would pinch me under my leg. She'd give me that look. Give me one little nudge just to let me know I got to sit up and fly right. Come on, now that you are mature. You're too old to be logging off now. You know better. You got to stay in until the benediction. There's something that God has for you. Stay tuned. Come on, mature people. You ain't got nowhere to go. We are in a pandemic. Stay right there. We've got more news that we want to share with you. Wow, what an amazing service. I hope that it blessed you like it blessed me. Yes, and we would love to see you back next Sunday, same time, same place. And New Birth, don't forget to mark your calendars. Tune in for the vaccination revival on October 20th through the 22nd. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Have a blessed and prosperous week, and we'll see you next Sunday.